Good afternoon. Please turn and introduce yourself to the jury. Uh, my name is Johnny Broadsides. And how old are you, Mr. Broadsides? I'm 17. Tell the members of the jury why you're here today. Uh, I'm here today because I was the wit a witness to, to, a, to a murder. Okay, now Mr. Broadsides, I want to take you back for a couple moments before we talk specifically about that murder. Where were you the day before it started out? Uh, I was home and uh, I had gone to work. I had worked overnight shift and so I was really, really tired. I woke up around 3 o'clock in the afternoon and uh, I went to go play basketball with my friends and we were there for about two hours before the incident happened. You said you were playing basketball. Where at? Uh, at the community center, the university center. Okay, Your Honor, may I approach the witness with an exhibit? You may. Mr. Broadsides, I'm showing you what's been previously marked as Plaintiff's Exhibit A for identification. Do you recognize that? Uh, I do. How do you recognize it? Uh, it's the University Community Center. And is it a fair and accurate depiction of the community center about where you were that day? Yeah, it is. Your Honor, the plaintiff would like to enter into evidence what's been previously marked as Plaintiff's Exhibit A, as Plaintiff's Exhibit 1 for the record, and let the record reflect also that I'm showing opposing counsel for inspection. Mr. Broadsides, would an enlargement of Plaintiff's 1 assist you with your testimony here today? Like a, like a bigger picture? Yes. Yeah. Your Honor, may the, may the witness uh, step down and utilize this exhibit? Mr. Broadsides, tell the members of the jury what we're looking at on this board. Uh, this is the basketball courts in the community center where I play basketball. Where were you standing on this board? Um, I was playing basketball. I was standing about, about here. And Mr. Broadsides, with that green marker I gave you, will you mark where on the basketball court you were that day? Yeah. Uh, right here. And would you label it JB for your initials? Thank you. Now, Mr. Broadsides, while you were playing basketball, what did you hear? Well, I, I heard like a thud and a lot of screaming, like a lot of screaming. And so I, I ran out to see what it was. I, Where, where'd you run to? Um, I went around these trees here about to about here. Okay, and what is this, Mr. Broadsides? Oh, this is the street, uh, like right next to the basketball courts. And what did you see when you, get, when you got to the street? Well, I saw like three cars. Um, there was a van, a white van that was parked, and then uh, about a hundred feet up there was a Honda that was parked, and then uh, over here there was a Toyota. So there were about three cars that I saw when I, when I, when I came into the street. Um, I also saw someone that was lying in the road dead, one of, some kid I know in the neighborhood. Okay, Mr. Broadside, so I want to back up for a moment. Would you mind marking on this diagram where you saw the van? Well, the van was about here. Okay, and would you mark that V for van? And you mentioned you also saw two other cars. The first car you saw, what was that again? Uh, it looked like a Honda. Okay, and would you mark on the diagram where you saw that car? Uh, right about here. And can you mark H for Hyundai on that? Okay, and you mentioned one more car. Where was that car? Well, there's a Toyota that was up here. All right, would you mark that for us? Thank you. No, Mr. Broadsides, you mentioned too that you saw someone dead in the street? Yeah, like right here by the Honda, like underneath the Honda, there, there was this kid who I knew from the neighborhood and he, he looked like he had been hit or run over. I really didn't know what was going on. And so I ran and I approached the, the car and it sped off. It just left, but I, I thought I saw someone in the car. It looked like a, like a lady, like a woman, okay. but I wasn't exactly sure. And then I walked further up to this car, and as soon as I got about, about here, it sped off too. And I started screaming at it, but, but this car look, had, had, had a lot of blood on the side, or something had happened. It just didn't look right. It just didn't look right. And those cars, they don't really belong in the, in the neighborhood, so I knew that they weren't from there. Okay. They, were, they were like newer cars. And Mr. Rogers, I want to back up for a moment. Can you take this red marker for me, and can you mark on the diagram where you saw the dead children? Well, there's one here. Okay. And then there looked like there was a baby. He had to be a young kid, 
like a, a baby, maybe a, a toddler. I don't even know what you call him, but he was dead and he was over here. So I saw two dead bodies that day. Okay. And Mr. Broadside, you mentioned that you might have known these kids. Where do you know them from? Well, I don't know them personally, but I mean, I, 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 I seen them around. Uh, this guy here who was dead, I saw him in the neighborhood a couple times, but I don't really, I'm not friends with him. And I don't know whose baby that is. I just, I don't know. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Broadside. You may take your seat. Mr. Broadsides, a minute ago you told us about how you were standing at the basketball courts when you heard that scream. Did you actually see the accident happen? No, I didn't see it happening. I just heard the screams. Okay, now I want to go back about when you told us about that car that you kind of knocked on the window. Tell the jury what that car did when you knocked on the window. Well, I, I knocked, I banged on the door to try to get the person inside to get out because it looked like they had hit the person, but I, I really didn't know. Although I did hear the thud, and they just they just sped off. I mean, they almost ran over my foot. Thank you, Mr. Broadsides. No further questions, John. Erica, why don't you tell me what your goals were in using this diagram with your witness? Sure. Well, I wanted Johnny Broadsides, obviously, to step down and utilize this exhibit for the jury so they could get a better feel of where exactly the cars were in the accident and how it all played out step by step. Step by step. Now, notice you've got two colors here. You've got green and you've got red. Now, there's a couple of different things that I want to talk about with using diagrams. Now, you admitted this when you were done, right? I did. So it can, it can no longer be modified, can it? No. All right. There's no legend on it, is there? No. So, I, I mean, we've got some marks uh, that we may or may not be able to remember by the time that we get to closing argument with the jury, right? That's right. So I'm going to put this up. I'm going to show it to the jury, and it may be a week. It may be two weeks later. It may be months later, depending upon the trial. And we may not remember what those marks are, let alone the jury. So um, let's think about it. One thing that I can always do is I can have a legend prepared for the marks that I intend to use with the witness. And I can put the legend in the corner of the diagram. I can put it on the back of the diagram. I leave it covered so that the witness can't see it, the jury can't see it. But at the time that the witness's testimony is complete, before I admit it into evidence, I uncover the legend and I note for the record, Your Honor, uh, note for the record that we have a legend on the diagram identifying the marks that have been made by the witness so that they can be understood at a later date. The, the, the benefit to the legend is that it helps keep us on track. The other thing that we can do, I mean, the markings that you have here are fine, but if I want to bump it up another level, I can have stickers that have, uh, that have been pre-printed with the right name or with the right label, even a little stick figure of a human being, and I can have a little man here standing in place of where we've got JB. And then I can draw the path in a different color from what I'm going to do with the vehicles. And then I can give him a color form vehicle or a little cut out of a vehicle and place it here. Then I can draw a separate path showing his walk the second time, again with a different color, and put another vehicle here. And once I begin to do things like that, then I can get really creative from a persuasion perspective. I can choose colors based upon my understanding of what colors may or not represent uh, underneath the surface to the people who are watching them. So for example, if it's a criminal case and it's the accused, my A's are always in dark bloody red and victims are always in a soft blue or some other color. Uh, here it might be helpful to have those cars in certain spaces and maybe have something other than an X to show the location maybe of the children and you could give him child one, child two, child three and he literally places them on the ground where he remembers them to be. Now that's not to say that what you did wasn't fine. This is a clear representation of what the witness had to say. It's done in the witness's own handwriting which is always um, a little bit more persuasive because we have the witness making those marks themselves. But as we think about it, uh, as we begin to present the witness's testimony with diagrams, we practice to make it persuasive. And those things that I've talked about with you can make the use of the diagram even stronger and ensure that when you use it on the back side, when you get to closing argument, because of course you're going to use this in close, right? Absolutely. Yeah, if, if you're not going to use it closed, why would you even bother to do it? Right. So you're going to have this up, and the jury's going to be looking at this, and you're going to be talking about what Johnny Broadside said and what it meant. 
And my guess is you'll also have it up again for other witnesses that were present, right? That's right. So you have multiple copies of this diagram uh, with different witnesses. So you'll flip them down one at a time, witness one, witness two, witness three. And then you'll probably have a composite where you yourself will show what all of them tell us together. So when we start to think in those ways, it becomes important that we use the type of structures that are the same all the way across the board. Okay. From a persuasion perspective and from an ease of teaching perspective. All right? Yes, sir. Okay, good job.